Fantastic. So I'm joined today uh, by Tony, um, who works for Cosmos Currency Exchange. Um, so Tony, I'll pass over to you if you'd like to tell us um, what it is you do and how long you've been running the business for. No problem at all. Thank you very much for the invite, Sammy. It's nice to be on. Um, so I'm Tony Redondo. I run Cosmos Currency Exchange. Um, I personally have been in financial services all my working life which in uh, my case is <clears throat> 37 years. Um, and, but I set up Cosmos in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we provide currency payment services for clients. So whether you're an individual, charity or a company, if you have a bill to pay that's not in sterling uh, for whatever reason, uh, because you're importing something from abroad or you're paying an overseas remote worker or you've got you know, liaising with an office abroad or you've got clients abroad and you're receiving euros and dollars or whatever the amount, whatever the currency is, um, we can help get clients a much, much better deal and smooth those bumps along the road, which will otherwise be the case because it isn't as straightforward as it should be. <laughs> so that's, that's what we do. Yeah, I guess lots of external factors, perhaps like Brexit, which would have affected what you do. Didn't help, didn't yeah. help. I'm yeah. very busy once again. It went into a bit of a lull last year. 2020 was very busy with Brexit and it's gone, gone busy again because um, I've got a case actually, my last phone call before uh, meeting with yourself was a, a lady whose mum has just sold a property in Spain, um, got um, a, um, an account in Spain and the Spanish bank turned around to her after she's been a client for about 40 years to say, oh, I'm sorry, but if you want the euros to go back to a euro account in London, that's now outside the eurozone uh, and we now charge percentage fees. So she is looking at the 3000 euro fee just for the transfer. That's before the currency exchange. Yeah, it's complete nonsense. So luckily I'm able to help her because we're one of the few licensed brokers with local collection accounts. So she can register with me. She then gets access to a euro account in Frankfurt in Germany, mm -hmm. which is still inside the eurozone. And then she can just go online and move the funds from Spain to Germany at the click of a button. At most, it'll, ch it'll cost her 20 euros rather than 3,000 euros. Yeah. <laughs> and then once the funds get to Frankfurt, we'll bring them back to the UK and convert them back to sterling for her. Wow. So it is providing by yeah, absolute Brexit is another. And generally, you know, a lot of banking systems around the world, Sammy, are just not as advanced as the UK one. Mm -hmm. I know we always like to complain about the bloody banks and all the rest of it. Um, and they don't do themselves many favours most of the time. But, you know... <sighs> Imagine the scenario if I tell you how many clients know the 90% of business transactions in the United States are still settled by checkbook. Yeah, that's amazing. That's that's a true statistic. 90%. Uh, yeah. The checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, I know I got a checkbook when I opened the Cosmos account two and a bit years ago. Yeah. But where yeah. it is, uh, I have no idea because I've never used it. <laughs> yeah, sure. I feel like that's something you just see in the films, um, in American films, you see them writing checks and you think, oh, it's just a prop, but actually it's... Yeah, exactly, yeah. no, no, it's a normal way of life out there. Yeah. So again, you know, lots of problems with clients, uh, British clients exporting to the United States, mm. um, particularly when we first opened, um, because what happened was, of course, there was a lockdown and what a lot of British clients didn't realise is they were sending invoices to the clients in the United States with to pay dollars into a dollar account in London. Never even occurred to the British exporter that that client in Florida or California or wherever they happen to be can't do it by online transfer. It doesn't it only works within the United States. Of course, yeah. Now what that client was having to do is to print off a copy of the invoice, get in the car, drive to the bank, fill out a form, for the dollars to be transferred, but of course, during lockdown, the banks were shut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, what? Now, what do they do? Mm -hmm. So again, we've got uh, we're one of the few brokers with a dollar account in New York. Okay. Nice. So again, nice. that, those clients can now register with Cosmos. On the invoice goes out the dollar account details in New York, 
and that client in Arizona or Texas or Florida or wherever just goes does an online transfer mm -hmm. from their account to the New York account and we take care of the rest. So it's just practical solutions to make life as simple as it should be. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I, I work for, for the banks for the majority of my working life. Um, they're very good at lots of things they do. But in the 21st century, I don't think I'm being unkind in suggesting that why does it take five days for a check to clear in the 21st century? Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. It takes five seconds. Mm -hmm. But by saying it takes five days, guess who earns interest on your money during yeah. those five yeah. days? Yeah. <laughs> Give me a clue. It's not the client. <laughs> That's the, uh, the things you don't want to believe, but actually they are true. So, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, just touching on COVID there, then that was sort of the effects that COVID had mm. uh, potentially on your customers or clients. How, but um, speaking about your experience, Tony, sort of setting the business up two years ago, how, how was the effect of COVID on yourself? Um, did you set up before or during COVID? Or? Uh, we set up just before. Yeah. Six weeks before. Wow. And then uh, COVID the hit and then um, the first lockdown came and we lost 90% of our revenue stream in week six sure. because a lot of my work at the time involved international property mm -hmm. and of course with nobody able to travel or view yeah. and yeah. nothing was open guess what happened to those property purchases and sales they just mm -hmm. all disappeared um, so that was really tough uh, for any business to take a 90% hit never mind one that's six weeks old so I'm not going to pretend, but the flip side of the coin is clients all of a sudden had problems in getting monies back from Europe, as we've been discussing, or from the United States or from Canada. And we were able to facilitate those yeah. payments to help clients out. The other thing that helped from a business point of view uh, is that, you know, I, I love living in Cornwall. We've been in Cornwall for 16 years. It's not me being clever, it's my wife, because all her childhood holidays were in Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> when we decided to get together and start a family, you know, Mrs. Redondo said, uh, let's go to Cornwall. And I said, yes, to you. <laughs> but choice. joking, you know, we love living in Cornwall. Mm -hmm. But pre-COVID, things like networking were really complicated. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there is a relatively small what makes Cornwall lovely to live in, in my view, is that it's quite remote and it's not overpopulated and there's not, you know, it's not a sort of big city feel of so many cars and buildings and people and noise and everything else. Um, but from a business point of view, of course, he means there are the, the choices pre-COVID were either a small number of people that were you regularly met at the local chambers of commerce or FSB events, or you had the, the lights of the F30 up and down to Exeter yep. <laughs> to try and get to the Exeters, the Plymouths, the Bristols, the Baths, the Tauntons, the Cardiffs. But as you well know, that's a good two, three, four hours each yeah, way. Yeah. You know? And then, of course, everybody went online. And then all of a sudden, I'm getting invites to have online networking meetings with people in Australia okay. and Canada. Yep. South Africa and the Middle East and mm -hmm. the United States, and which for a business like ours obviously is wonderful uh, because it's just as easy for us to deal with clients out there as it is with British clients. Um, and we have access to over 50 countries around the world. So that was really, really the best thing that happened with COVID. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it was tough times, but um, we got through it. So do you have, do you have a global clientele? Um, I'm believing, yeah. 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 And the majority then, are British based, but yes. I've got clients in literally all four corners of the world. Wow. And then within that, do you have a particular demographic who is your best customer, uh, for example, or you know, your particular age group that will come to you for assistance? Um, I've, it's pretty, actually, it's a lot more spread out than you'd think. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, it's probably the majority are above 40 years of age rather than below um, in terms of volume of amount traded because the it will be the older people with equity that will be 
investing the equity in buying a holiday home abroad yeah. or you know or sending their children off to uh, you know university abroad or what have you whereas the younger crowds i tend to do a lot of salary payments okay and pension payments uh, so they might be working out in the Middle East and then they, most of the salary goes back home to the UK mm -hmm. uh, to meet the family bills. Um, but it's really, my best client is, is simple really, Sammy. It, it's whoever appreciates good old-fashioned relationship-based service. Okay, nice. Um, and I think one of the things I always say to people sort of my age and above is do you remember when bank managers were bank managers <laughs> well that's the kind of service we try and provide okay um yeah, whereas of course if you speak to somebody your age um you know you would know what a real bank manager yeah or, not much or, relationship or, Mine's on. all on here exactly. <laughs> online banking exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> i am the bank manager <laughs> yeah so that's what we do but it's uh, it's it's pretty varied but really is anybody who appreciates a personalized service mm -hmm. rather than I have to fill in that form online, and if I get stuck, I get stuck. Yeah, mm -hmm. I um I spent some time working um overseas actually aboard super yachts, so oh. I was sort of yeah paid in um euros and then had that sort of thing. But I used an, I just used an app online, and then it was easy enough for what I had to do. <laughs> but that's <laughs> it was short lived. That's okay. <laughs> um, so talking about um. Like yourself, sort of how long you've been in business now? Obviously, previously you were an employee, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So now being your own boss, what's what have you learned about yourself that's you know, the best thing that you can take away from it? Um, what have I learned about myself? I think there's a lot of things that are kind of like new in theory, mm. but it's always different to actually knowing it in practice. Um, you know, I was an employee of various banks and brokers for 35 years uh in cornwall in london and abroad and um i thought i knew a lot about my industry and i guess in a way i did but what's really hit me between the eyes is just how hard work um self-employed people work really hard mm -hmm. you know uh, there's a lot of talk of course about wellness these days and work-life balances and but self-employed people put the hours in, my goodness, you know. Um, I guess um, it's been really good for me. I've really enjoyed it from the point of view that there is no hiding place. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter if you enjoy doing something or not. Um, I mean, I remember it was only two years ago that I ever recorded my first ever podcast. Okay, cool. Yeah. And it came from a friend of a friend, and I said to this lady, Look, Liz, you know, one of my hobbies is photography because and one of the reasons for that is that I'm very comfortable behind the camera, not in front of it, <laughs> you know, and she laughed and she said, oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. And luckily she was so laid back and so lovely that, you know, it all went well. Um, but I found it a really good medium to get, you know, your, your, your message across. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But really, as, as an employee, you know, you might have the luxury of saying, Give it to somebody else. I don't want to do that. Thank you. That's way outside my comfort zone. You know, when you run your own business, if you want to, no you know, if you want it to work, it needs to be done. That's yeah. it. <laughs> of course. Um, and then previous to our um, virtual meeting on here, I took a look at your website. Are you currently up updating your website, or do you, yes. do you rely on that quite heavily? Yeah. Yes, very much so. Yeah. So uh, I designed my original website um, on one of these drop drop and drag yeah. platforms and it was functional and it it's worked for two years but it wasn't really fit for purpose it didn't really send, um, explain the difference of using cosmos yes. you know explain what we did but that's pretty obvious from the from, from the name of the company yeah. it didn't really yeah. explain what's different about us because the world is not short of currency brokers you know there's hundreds of banks out there there's apps like you used when uh, you know when you worked abroad uh, there's plenty of, of brokers up in london and elsewhere um but cosmos is a bit different in that there isn't one size fit all yep. every yep. client gets a discovery session where we find out what they're looking at doing at the time frame they're looking at doing it in so that we can then tailor make a, a, a solution for them okay. and and that includes monitoring the markets 
So, you know, you're getting paid in dollars from running a, a yacht up in the Caribbean or something. You know, you tell me I'm going to get X dollars on this date and I need the pounds to pay the mortgage and the rent or whatever it is on this date. Mm -hmm. You can then get on with your life. And then our job is to monitor the market. So when the dollar's strongest against the pound, we yeah. can phone you and say, Sammy, it's a good time because, you know, the rates are good at the moment so that you get the most out of it. And that is not, however clever the algorithm and technology these days is incredibly advanced. Yeah. I mean, incredibly advanced what it does, but it's pretty hard to talk to an algorithm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a, hopefully a little bit easier to talk to another human being. Mm. My husband does that when we when we go on holiday. He's got the the Revolut app, so he'll look at it. Yes. He'll like monitor it a few days before and like see if it's gone up or gone down. He'll just be like no, I'm like we're literally getting a couple more pounds here. Like it's, yeah, it's that's it's right. <laughs> you, an extra half a beer. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, hopefully your um, your website will be ready soon, and then hopefully that will drive some more traffic your way, and yeah, hopefully get you some more customers. That's yeah. that's an exciting we, time. We hope you'll go live on Friday. Oh, nice. uh, we're hoping you'll go live on Friday. It's just been tested at the moment because Friday is our second anniversary. Oh, congratulations! Uh, yeah, we actually started trading on the on the first of July two thousand and twenty. Okay. So uh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, that'll be good. Hopefully, we'll make it to year two and yes. beyond. <laughs> <laughs> You're very close. You're very close. <laughs>